as gold in the furnace. The Lord put his chosen to the test. As sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself, and in due time they will be honored, and grace and peace will be with the elect of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we approach this liturgy, let's call to mind on our, our sins and our failings as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do to my fault my fault, the most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians, Mercifully grant that the, the field which is your church, watered by the blood shed by St. Charles Luanga and his companions, may be fertile and always yield you an abundant harvest. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the promise of life in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to you, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did as I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. For this reason, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did, did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner, for his sake but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our savior, Jesus Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed preacher and apostle and teacher. On this account, I am suffering these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know him in whom I have believed and am confident that he's able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, to you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. To you, I lift up my eyes who are enthroned in heaven. Behold, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord our God till he have pity on us. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes.
Aleluia, aleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone brothers dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants. And the third likewise. And the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, Are you not misled because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When they arise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses in the passage about the bush how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of, not God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> so this morning we uh, celebrate a uh, feast of St. Charles Lwanga and his uh, companions. They're uh, Ugandan martyrs um, that helped to spread the faith uh, and start the faith in, in Africa. They were initially catechized by missionary priests uh, called uh, the White Fathers who catechized them and, and baptized them. Uh, and they were young uh, and they were uh, newly brought into the church, newly brought into a life of faith uh, with, with Jesus. Well, in Uganda, there was the king was King Mwanga, and he let many of these Christians uh, into his court to kind of uh, help lead the country. But the Christians uh, you know, were doing a good job, but they also challenged uh, many of the morals uh, that the, the, he was a violent king and did a lot of immoral things, including you know, asking sexual favors from those in the court. And obviously these new Christians uh, with a different mind in Christ um, uh, were, were not approving uh, of the king and the way he was. So eventually, uh, he gave the Christians a choice. You know, deny your faith uh, or die for your faith. And these brave uh, young men uh, chose death. So they led them out of the city and uh, died and burned them on pyres. St. Tertullian, as we heard in our um, heard uh, in our opening prayer, said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Well, after all of this, you know, you would think, you know, Christianity is pretty much done in this area, right? All those who were fervent for the faith were martyred and executed. Well, and when the priests, you know, were expelled, they eventually came back to the area. Uh, and what they found, there was 500 Christians uh, and over 1,000 those were being catechized and ready to come into the church. That martyrdom, the witness of giving your life totally for God, uh, is essential to the fruitfulness of Christianity. Paul kind of helps define what a martyr is in his letter to St. Timothy, I think, well. He says, a martyr is one who endures hardship for the sake of the gospel with the strength of provided by God. You know, that the church isn't, is not merely a human initiative, but is, it is one that is divine. It's one who comes, it's, it's initiative, it's a reality in the world that comes from Christ in his own life. And that Christians, called to follow and enter into the life of Christ, means that we're invited into the cross of Christ. 
you know, in our own lives, we may not have someone who you know, wants to kill us for our faith. But there are other ways we can enter into dying for ourselves, dying to ourselves for the sake of the gospel. In the sense, you know, a spiritual martyrdom, which is what the road to sanctification, you know, dying to a life of sinfulness and selfishness, our own ego, giving our life, our time, over for the sake of other people, entering into a life of prayer, of fasting, and almsgiving. This is a kind of martyrdom in which bears fruit, you know, in our own lives and the lives of others. You know, whether we see it now or that grace plays out, you know, in another way uh, in our lives. So today, may we be inspired by the life and example of St. Charles Luanga and those who gave their lives for the faith. And may we pray for the strength to embrace martyrdom, whatever that may look like in simple ways in our own lives, as we follow uh, the example of Christ, who is the life, death, and resurrection of the world. bring before our Heavenly Father our needs and our petitions. For the Church, may God empower us in contributing to the transformation of the whole world. Let us pray to the Lord. For governments around the world, may God guide their leaders to truth, especially the truth of the dignity of every human person. Let us pray to the Lord. For those suffering from any serious health or life circumstances, may the love of Christ console them in faith and trust. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those gathered here, may God open our minds and our hearts to the work he is asking of us and grant us the grace to respond in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died in the hope of the resurrection, May they rest in the peace of God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all the personal intentions we hold in our hearts and bring to this Mass. And for Evelyn Pulsa, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you know us and you love us. We ask you to hear and answer our prayers and petitions they be in accord with your will and be in your time. We ask them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness <clears throat> we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you sacrifice, O Lord, humbly praying that as you granted the blessed martyrs grace to die rather than sin, so you may bring us to minister at your altar in dedication to you alone. Through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders in your, of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out and with an without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we, <clears throat> we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep on the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his holy ones.
Let us pray. We have received this, this divine sacrament, O Lord, as we celebrate the victory of your holy martyrs, that what helped them to endure torment, we pray, make us in the face of trials steadfast in faith and in charity. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.